Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the scheduling assistant in your Microsoft calendar. As always, I'm going to show you how to use it in both the desktop application and the web version. Okay, so let's get started. I have opened my Microsoft Outlook desktop application. So I'm going to come up to the left column and click on my calendar icon. Scheduling Assistant is a great way to find a meeting time that works for everyone that you need to invite to a meeting rather than sending emails back and forth or making phone calls to find times that work. You can do all of that stuff just by using the scheduling assistant. So let's get started. If you come up to the top left, click on either new appointment or new meeting. Once the meeting box pops open, begin to fill out the information as you normally would. When scheduling a meeting, you have the option to add attendees as required attendees or optional attendees. So keep that in mind when you are putting in your attendees. If you click in the space, it will automatically pop open the most recent people that you have had contact with, which is super helpful as well. If you don't see the people you need to add, just start typing their name and then click on them as they pop up. You can choose to set the date and time here that works best for you, or just go right to scheduling assistant after you add the location. The location I do feel is important because the space might not be available, but the people might be. So you definitely wanna add in your location if you're going to be using a specific room. Now I have all my information filled out, I'm ready to use Scheduling Assistant. If I come up to the top next to where it says Meeting, I see the Scheduling Assistant tab and I need to click there. You can see here on the left-hand side, the people that I've added as required attendees. And you can also see the room that I added as an extra resource. If I added optional attendees, they would be here. And again, you can add in optional attendees or change out the required attendees. If you may have forgotten somebody or need to take somebody out, you can actually do that right here in Scheduling Assistant as well. So right now I'm just going to add in an optional attendee. So you can see that as that comes up as well. And now here you see everybody's calendar availability. It does not provide any personal information or why that time is blocked off, it will just tell you if the person is busy, tentative, out of office, working elsewhere, no information, or outside of working hours. And again, those color codes are along the bottom bar here, so you can always use those as reference. The goal here is to take this bar and be able to move it in a location where you see all white space. That tells you that everyone, including the room, is available at that date and time. So right here, I see a nice long white space. So if I click there, the bar automatically pops there. And it tells me now that everyone is available during that date and that time. Once you've clicked on the white space that tells you that the attendees and the room are available, you can either click send right from there or you can go back to the meeting window and continue to fill out any required information and then hit send from there. Once you hit send, everybody receives an email notification that asks them to RSVP to the meeting that you just scheduled. Now that you know how to use the scheduling assistant in the desktop application, I wanted to show you how to use it in the web version of Microsoft Outlook and Microsoft Calendar as well. In true Microsoft fashion, there are a few ways to get to the web version. 
and I wanted to show you a different way rather than just opening a browser and going to portal.office.com. If you are in your Microsoft Outlook desktop application and you click the file tab at the top left, it brings you to this home info page. If you click this link right here next to your profile picture, it will automatically open the web version of Microsoft Outlook. If you have never logged in, it may prompt you to log in using your NASA BOCES credentials. So now that I clicked that link, it immediately popped open this browser window and brought me right in to the web version of Microsoft Outlook. Remember, you also can go to portal.office.com to log in to the web version as well. You can do that in any browser of your choice, Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome. Now that we're here, I want to show you how to use Scheduling Assistant in the web version of Microsoft Outlook Calendar. So again, on the left-hand column, you want to look for your calendar icon. If you don't see it in the column, you can click the waffle. Once you click the waffle, you want to look for the calendar icon. If you don't see it here in this main screen, click All Apps, which will give you that alphabetized list of the applications. When you see the calendar icon, I highly suggest that you click those three dots to the right and pin the application to the launcher. What that will do is when you click the waffle, you will now always see that calendar icon there for easy access. Okay, let me show you how easy it is to use the scheduling assistant in the web version of Microsoft 365. Just like in the desktop application, you're going to click new event and begin to fill out the required information. Here's something a little different. Invite attendees has the optional section as an add-on. So if you wanna add optional attendees, just click on that little blue link there and it will open up that option for you. Now again, if you click in the white space, just like in the desktop application, it will pull up your suggested contacts. So people that you're in contact with most will pop up there. So you can easily click. If you don't see the person that you need to add as an attendee, again, just start to type their name and their information will pop up so you can click on it. If you have an optional attendee, you could put that person in, but you also can add that person in the scheduling assistant area as well. A little bit different, right here, they are using suggested times. So it's almost like the web version is doing the work of the scheduling assistant for you and giving you some available options around the date and time that you have indicated here. So if you clicked in a specific date and time that you knew was available for you, it would give you those suggested times that was available for the people that you have invited. It also gives you a little bit of a quick view on the right hand side here of everybody's availability. And I also wanted to remind you to always put in the room location if you are going to need that space to be booked. Again, you may want to decide if you want that Teams meeting option to be toggled on or off. Refer to my previous video for information regarding that. And then once you have that information filled out, Scheduling Assistant tab again is up at the top of the bar. You just click Scheduling Assistant and very similar to the desktop application, you will see every required attendee, every optional attendee, and the room if you have added a room. 
on the left hand side. Then you have in front of you everybody's schedule. And again, you're looking for that white space or that white column of availability. That's how you know everyone, including the room, if you did add a room, is free. What I like about the web version that the desktop app does not have is that the bar changes color based off availability. So once you click into that space and the bar moves, if it's green, everyone's available. You can see here it's red because not everybody is available during that time. But if I click here, everyone is available, so it turns green. The other nice feature about this bar, and it is also the same for the desktop application, you can click and drag this bar out for longer spaces of time. It doesn't have to just be that half an hour. So you really can drag to select the amount of time that you need for that meeting. And just like in the desktop application, if you come down to the bottom here, you will see the different color codes to let you know what everybody's schedule is kind of referring to. You can toggle this option on up at the top here that allows you to see the most detailed information around everybody's schedule. Again, you won't see anybody's private information, but you will see more details around their availability if that is turned on. You can also choose to turn on having the times hidden outside of your meeting hours, just again, for easier viewing of this schedule. Once you have selected the date and time, you click back into event tab, ensure that the rest of the information is filled out the way you need it to be filled out, and then you're going to click send. Again, just like in the desktop application, everyone will receive an email alerting them to the meeting that you have scheduled. And here they will be able to RSVP to the scheduled meeting that you have created. Now you know how to use the scheduling assistant in your Microsoft calendar. Stay tuned for next week's What the Tech tip. See you then.